Hi, Melanie Chris with Community Therapy Services here. Earlier today, I did a recording with a couple of students while I administered the Learning Without Tears Screener of Handwriting Proficiency. And this recording is a follow-up for to, to demonstrate the scoring and reporting process of the screener. So I'm going to pull up one of the completed forms that was sent to me for us to score together. Now the first thing that we're going to look at is memory. So are there any letters that were omitted or unrecognizable like a squiggly line or just wrote the wrong letter like a lowercase r for a capital or vice versa. So this student does have a few memory errors. The first line looks good. Um, the second line looks good. The lowercase row, she has some letters capitalized. So we're going to start here with green. And I'm just going to mark an M for those that are memory errors. Okay, so she's got three memory errors. Something to note, they do not get memory errors if the letter's in the wrong place. For example, the P and the Y look the same, lowercase or capital. So we're, we don't want to, so we don't know what, whether or not she was sinking capital or lowercase. It's just, it could be a letter placement error. So we're not going to have them lose credit if the letter is the wrong place and not near the line. Uh, a letter or number that is reversed or backwards will also not get a memory error. That's another section. And a letter that uses the wrong size. For example, if the O is too small or too big, you know, we're, we're not going to give them a memory error for that. So orientation would be next. Let's change our color. Yeah, we'll make O orange. Okay, so here we're looking for letters that are reversed or backward. So we do have some of those. Here's one, the F. We've got one with a five, one with a six with a extra long line on it, and the Y. So we have four, it looks like four orient, orientation errors. Then we're gonna look for placement. Depending upon the grade uh, will depend, or the grade will dictate the amount of space that the student can or that that they need to have their writing within so much space from the line so for example kindergartners it needs to be within one eighth of an inch of the line first grade it needs to be one within one sixteenth of an inch of the line in the administration packets there is a paper a page that you can print out and put on transparent a transparency and you'd be able to set it right on top and score very easily and quickly which ones have those placement errors if you don't have that you can use a ruler and look at that so earlier I did look I had the the scaling is not correct that's on the screen but I had it in front of me uh, scoring it and we will make these red for placement errors so we had one here well, let me a couple things to note about placement errors. Obviously, if a letter or a number that should be on the baseline but's outside of that error, um, th those letters are a placement error. But also, if there's just a part of the letter that should be on the line but it's not in that area, that gray area within that one eighth of an inch above or below the line, um, that would also be a placement error. So, for example, this R here, the left side of the R looks good, but the right side of the R it has a placement error so that is a placement error we've got a placement error here 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 got a placement error here it was close but just missed that 1 16th of an inch for a first grader we've got an error here placement error here and a placement error here so if I counted right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 nine placement errors. Okay, then we're going to look for sentence errors. What we're looking for here is 
uh, we're looking to see if they used a capital letter. If they did not, it's a sentence error. So she did, so there's no error there. If they mixed capital and lowercase letters in a sentence, and she did. So we've got one sentence error. And did they put too much space between letters in a word? Okay, so where they were too spread out, and that was not the case. Did she put words too close? Okay, um, you might be able to debate that this might be a little too close. So we might say there's two sentence errors. And then did they forget to end punctuation? And no, she has punctuation here, a nice and big period. All right, you're also going to look at their name and look to see so that you can comment if they were all capitals, if it was a transitioning mix of capital and lowercase, or if the first letter was capitalized and the rest lowercase. Other concerns you're going to be on the lookout for, but we're not scoring, are formation, letter size, neatness, speed. Looking, did, did it seem very laborious and uh, take, take them quite a bit of time? Or did they seem to rush through? If you are doing the screener with a whole bunch of students, you can kind of tell those kids that took a lot longer than the others and maybe make a comment about that or those that hurried up and rushed through and were finished before everyone else. But also, you want to look out for their posture, their pencil grip, their helper hand, and any other observations you might uh, take note of in the manual. It mentions looking for any cognitive, physical, language, attention, or other skills that might affect their written work. So once you've scored that, then we're going to go to the online reporting area. So if you just go to lwtears.com and search for screener, it should come up right here, the very first thing, the screener of handwriting proficiency. If you scroll down, you can click get started. This will prompt you to create an account if you haven't already, uh, So, but I already have one so you don't see those prompts. And there was the opportunity, I believe, to set it up so you had a class view or a uh, grade or a student view. I can't remember exactly, but I chose class view. And But I haven't set up any classes yet, so I'm going to show you how to set up a class. I'll just call this virtual OT with Mrs. Chris. We're using the handwriting without tears curriculum. It's a mix. I have some kindergarten and first graders that I'm working with that I want to put in this class. Uh, school started in August 2019-20 school year and I'm going to add some students. All these names are fictitious but we've got Adriana. We will say that Adriana is in RTI first grade and it automatically shows the the level of book for that grade. Then we've got Levi, I'm um, sorry not looked at that wrong. Landon, Pierre, and that is, oh, he has none, and this is first grade, and then we have Jeremiah on an IEP, kindergarten. Okay, once you've added your students in there, then save and finish. You can go to download the administration packets if you need them. I already have them all saved. There's one for each grade. Uh, and Or you can go to Screener Home. All right, so here are, or here is the class that I just set up. And I'm going to click on the students. What you're going to notice are some exclamation points. Those are just indicating, hey, you don't have a score in here. Please enter the score. You need to enter the score. The idea is over time to administer this three different times during the school year so you can see the progress that the student is having and any areas that uh, are a little more challenging for them. So what we're going to do is we're just going to enter the example that we did for Adriana in mid-year. Next. All right. So memory errors. Her memory errors were in the lowercase row where she had some capitals and so those were D, H, and G. She had three memory errors and what you'll notice is for orientation for letters that are symmetrical you cannot 
they, it blocks it out, it out because it is not even an option. It also blocks out letters that were memory errors because if they didn't remember how to do them, then the then they shouldn't get a score for anything else. So other things that were orientation errors, she had an F that was backwards. A five was backwards. The six was backwards. And the Y was. So four orientation errors. For placement errors, we had the W, the R, the three, the five, the six, the E, the A, the Y, and the P. So she had nine placement errors. And then for sentence errors, the only error she had was perhaps the words ran a little bit close together on the first two words and mixed capital and lowercase. Her name, she did a nice job and did it correctly with title case. And so concerns, so what concerns do we have? Well, um, when I was observing uh, earlier, we had, I had noticed a little bit of concern for letter formation. Some letters were retraced, some letters had extra long extensions on them, um, some letters uh, may have had points where there should have been curves or curves where there should have been points. So that was an area of need to look at. Letter size seemed appropriate, might have been a little bit big, but overall I didn't have major concerns about that. Um, let's see. Speed was okay, posture was okay, pencil grip was okay. Didn't always use her helper hand to stabilize the paper. So there's a couple things to keep an eye on. And then we finish. So what you can see is she has a score of 71%. And at the end of the year, we're going to look and um, hopefully see some improvements made to that score. And if we had done the assessment earlier, hopefully we, we have, would have seen some improvements from here to here. So this is just a really nice tool to be able to track your student's progress with some basic uh, things that we like to keep an eye on when it comes to handwriting, orientation, placement, memory, uh, just some various sentence errors, and then also just keeping in mind uh, that uh, you want to look out for some other observational things that aren't specifically scored as well in your documentation. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. And you can use this tool to um, assist you with some data uh, collection and uh, information gathering to look at the progress that your student is making as, a, as part of therapy or, or in class uh, during the school year.